Hello, my name is Ram Sudhir Sharma, and I'm a master's student at Clark University, where I work in the complex matter and nonlinear physics lab under Professor Arshad Kujoli. Today, I'm going to be talking with you about some recent experiments we have been doing with regards to dissolution of surfaces with embedded perturbations. The surfaces of planets are subject to a complex variety of processes, both in kind and scale, some examples of which are, are dissolution, sedimentation, um, erosion. Our lab's been working to create some experiments that can model erosion and sedimentation specifically in simpler quasi two dimensional geometry. Some of our lab's recent work is on the screen here. So in the center, we have a work on the formation of dominant channels um, because of curvature and porosity differences in, in the case of a fluid flow and the, the resultant sedimentation we focus on in a later work um, where we inject a granular suspension into an ambient fluid and show that if there is a density difference between the ambient fluid and the granular suspension, um, the grains sediment and, and the sedimentation is of the form of this fluvial fan and looked in the circular geometry looks like viscous fingering. So dissolution is another process we want to probe and its effects are well known to be important in the formation of caves and scars. And sugar candy has been recently used, and here are some examples as a way to model a dissolving matrix at laboratory timescale. So, so the images I have here on the right are images of work that people have produced recently. And in these works, people use this kind of caramel candy as a way to model a, a dissolving geological phenomenon. So in this context, today I'll be talking with you about the instabilities which shape a rough vertical solid interface as it dissolves in a fluid. Specifically, we show the growth of cave-like shapes and discuss conditions and some details about the interaction between the fluid flow and the local topography. So to model this rough vertical solid interface, we create a mold with a 3D printer where we can pour a liquid heated mixture of sugar like corn syrup and distilled water in this recipe that we have down here. And we, we pour it into this mold and we, we let it cool and solidify. Now surface perturbations can be caused because of air bubbles, there might be local just divots there. Um, and to model a surface perturbation, we ourselves, as the caramel is solidifying, create a cylindrical cavity by imposing a cylindrical structure right in the center of these and then place the system once it's completely solidified with, with a cylindrical cavity right in the center inside a large bath of water. So here is a cross section of what that looks like. Um, as the caramel dissolves, the dissolved mixture is heavier than fresh water and sinks. Um, as a result, a convection current is created because of this dissolution. And to, to focus on the local flow and to help imaging processes, we create a second plate, a second transparent plate and put it a height one millimeter away from the surface of the camel so we can limit the flow as, as just being within there. Once placed in the box, the buoyant convection resulting from the dissolution runs the experiment. So we can view from a region from the front as we have marked here as the viewing window. And we might expect this shape, which is our cavity to grow uniformly. So here, the dark area is the caramel and, and this circular region is the cavity where you can see some light from the back of our system coming through. You might expect it to grow uniformly. Let's see what we get. So each second of this film is a minute of real time. So in about 30 seconds, you can watch about 30 seconds, 30 minutes of this experiment playing out. So we watch the top surface flatten relatively quickly and the, the bottom surface continues to grow and over time, that growth seems to get faster, and we get a roughly triangular shape. Quite interesting. So, so this is what we're going to be talking about now. So the ceiling seems to recede faster than the bottom, and we can take images at four minute long intervals, and then just look at how those boundaries look at that point and put those here on top of each other. As you can see here, now the ceiling has receded faster initially and it flattens. Um, as the edge downstream stretches, the entire cave now develops some acorn-like shapes. If we look just at the central profile, as shown here, we can also empirically relate the intensity 
uh, of the images to the local height eta of the caramel. And as you can see here, the cave maintains its shape on the top while the floor of the cave smoothens. So the ceiling kind of maintains this roughly 90 degree angle and the floor of the cave kind of gets smoother and smoother as time goes on. Now, even if we don't impose a cavity ourselves, but rather just let a solid block of caramel dissolve uh, perturbations because of air bubbles or other things seem to give rise to very similar looking shapes spontaneously. So, so we can take uh, a solid block of caramel like this and we can take an X-ray image of one particular spontaneously grown cave to see its three-dimensional structure. And, and in taking the surface plot now, we, we get some idea of what it looks like here in 3D. And I have a GIF of it jumping around uh, to, to give you some, some idea of that. So what, what we have in blue here is, is the smooth surface outside, which is the surface of the entire caramel that's dissolving. And we see the formation of this perpendicular cave within that caramel body, where yellow being the deepest part of the cave seems to be right below the initial interface between the cave and the surface. And we see the gentle gradient, just like we'd seen before, continue in this case as well. A natural next question might be whether the orientation of the surface is of importance. And we report that if you apply the same perturbation to a horizontal surface, um, so we put the same perturbation here, but in this case, there's no gravity to run the experiment, so we have to impose a flow ourselves. Um, in this case, we do actually see the cavity expand the way we might intuitively think it does, but now the cavity seems to grow more or less uniformly. And to just characterize this difference more perfectly, here you can have a look at how those areas develop as a function of time in the vertical and horizontal conditions. So in the vertical condition, very quickly, it seems to grow a lot. And in the horizontal condition, there's a much slower growth. There is still some growth going on here. I should also note that the horizontal case seems to go on for much longer. So I plotted only the same time period, but it, it actually ends up taking about three times the amount of time. So we've shown so far that perturbations in a vertical dissolving surface grow into these caves when placed in a large bath of water. To examine why, we focus now on the fluid flow. We use microspheres that fluoresce under a 532 nanometer laser to illuminate the flow. These microspheres themselves have density slightly larger than that of distilled water. So we do put some sugar into the distilled water before we run these experiments, so they're neutrally buoyant. Um, and here's what we see. In, in real time, um, let me clear this. In, in real time, the, the top surface of the cavity roughens. We notice that the, the fluid seems to enter the cavity with some small distance away from the initial interface. Um, and in fact, if you take a longer exposure image, so in this case, it's two seconds, you can actually put a bunch of these streaks together to see exactly this, where we, we seem to get some, some simple motion above the hole and some reasonably understandable motion inside with some complicated motion inside the hole. And then there is this space between the initial interface and where the fluid seems to be entering the cavity. We can also use these trackers to estimate the velocity in different regions and get an estimate of the Reynolds number. And we find the Reynolds number to be between 1 and 20 for this setup. Of course, it changes a little bit depending on which part of the system we're probing. In looking at the cross section from the side, so again, like we had before, if we look at the yellow surface and we plot the laser, when we, sorry, we point the laser in the opposite direction now. And we can probe exactly how these microspheres look in, in this profile. We can see exactly that space we were talking about earlier. And we seem to have a vortex that, that is present in that space. We can focus on this region. And I have this region here dotted in, in orange. And we can look at how this region itself evolves with time. Um, and, and I'll show you this one second. So we, we observe a vortex develop just below the edge of the cavity. Um, and we can see fast dissolution in the presence of this vortex while the shape seems to be maintained. But as you can see, for much later times, we seem to lose the vortex. And at this stage, it looks like that top um, cave ceiling seems to grow uniformly. So in conclusion, we have some take-home messages. Um, we demonstrate that 
rough vertical solid liquid interfaces spontaneously develop cave-like features when undergoing dissolution. Um, we showed that these caves are formed perpendicular to the direction of the flow. They seem to have flat ceilings and more gradual floor gradients. Um, the formation of these caves is in fact dependent on the orientation of the dissolving surface. And it looks like horizontal interfaces evolve uniformly and do not seem to grow caves the same way. Okay, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Thank you.